Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the smart repair on the rear of this VW Transporter van. So it's had a little bit of rust on those two patches where you can see the primer and we're just going to do a little bit of a blow in along this swage line. Now to aid the blow in along the swage line I'm using some of the J-Tape Flexi No Blend Edge Tape. Now I always buy the Flexi rather than buying the standard because you can use this for a straight line as well as like obviously the flexible areas that this tape's meant for. So it saves me buying two different tapes, I'd rather just buy a couple of boxes of this one and keep the one in stock. So it's good for pretty much you know, every swage line that we want to do. And you just apply that by applying that on the very top edge of the swage line. And then as we go through, I'll explain how you make the most of obviously using that to your advantage when you're doing the job. Now for base coat, I'm going to be using my Segola 4600 Extreme Aqua. It's a 1.2 XL setup, so the 1.2 XL is more like the one a standard sort of conventional 1.3. But the thing that I do like about this is we can drop the pressure right down to like 1.1, 1.2 bar for pretty much every single colour out there. So there's never any issues on like the coarse metallics and that sort of thing with any mottling or anything like that. Now we've got two little spots there that we've just done UV primer and we're going to try and keep the base coat to around about the level of where the actual handle is on the middle of the door. Um, then we can keep it nice and low and what we want to do is keep the base coat away from that fade out tape because if any of the base coats hit, hits that edge and then we clear coat up to it then we're going to end up with a line going across. Now if it's just clear coat that hits that edge will end up with a very 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 light feathered edge so if we keep it nice and low in the middle there and away from the tape at the top it'll be absolutely spot on so for the first coat I've given <clears throat> on the actual repairs themselves a little bit of a heavier coat and then just a light blend across the rest of the bottom of the door just to ease that fade out in on this first coat and then we're just going to repeat that until we know we've got full coverage and we've got a nice blend along that middle section and you can see there where the edge of where I put the paint down is you want to keep it really on something like this so we're sticking to around about you know the top of that door handle we don't want to be going trying to go above that we want that little bit of distance for our clear blend going on the top and to make sure that obviously we're keeping the base coat well away from that tape along that top edge so a colour like this will colour up really well um, I've already done both bumpers for this van. Um, it's a van that we've had in for a few different bits of work. And so I already know that this cover, this colour, sorry, covers really well. So I'm just giving it a little bit of an extra go over obviously the bottom of the door where the issues have been. And then again, just a very, very, very light fade out across the top. And a little bit of a flick around just to get that nice, you know, even metallic lay down on the rest of the paint because it is quite a coarse metallic in this colour so we want to make sure that that last coat is a little bit of a drop coat as well as obviously a finishing blend coat. Now for clear coat I'm going to be using the Welcome Ego Carbonio it's the HTE 1.2 it's the Ego 190 so this is basically their mini gun. Now Personally, for me, I found this best if I ran it around about two to two and a half bar, anywhere in between there. I've used this a couple of times, and running it at like two and a half bar, I found it felt like it sprayed like a big gun. Although this is a mini gun, and it is a small size gun with a small size pot. I mean, you can tell like I'm, you know, one finger triggering it. So it is a small gun, but it is. An extremely powerful small gun in my opinion now I've used this quite a few times and I could say for you smart repair guys out there something like this would be absolutely ideal for you because whether it be a section like this which is as big as a wing on a car or some of the smaller parts that we're going to do in a minute this had absolutely no problem with knocking out all these parts now I'm using the normal sort of clear coat that I'd use in everyday jobs. You know, I'm not thinned anything down extra or anything like that. I'm just using this as I normally would. And as you can see there already, that's glossed up straight away. It's got a really nice flat finish on it. 
Again, the transfer efficiency on this one, because again, the HTE and the spray guns does stand for high transfer efficiency, and you really do notice it. And I noticed it most on this because I mixed up enough clear for what I thought I'd need, and I ended up with an absolute bucket full left over. Um, this used hardly any complete, any sort of clear coat compared to what I thought it did. And the biggest thing that I found with this was, as I said, even though it, f it is a minigun and it feels like a minigun, to me, this 110% felt like it sprayed as good as a big gun. Now, I've used a lot of miniguns over the years. Some I've liked, some have been okay. This, I really like. This is a gun that I will use a lot in my shop. Um, for bumper blow-ins, for like single panel, like a wingle or something like that. Uh, loads of loads of applications that I could use this for. Now, I wouldn't say that for most miniguns that I try. You know, I might use them for a little while and then I end up reverting back to my big guns and turning the fan down on them because they just feel a little bit more comfortable and I feel like I'm getting the amount of paint out that I want with the big gun. Whereas with this, as you can see, I've gone from painting a large section of a back door to now painting some really intricate grills and I found that I could switch from the two with no effort whatsoever. And the fan size on this for a minigun is really big. And I'm not knocking some of the other guns out there, but you know, the LPH80, for instance, cracking minigun, really good minigun, but I found that the fan size, for me in particular, was just too small. Now, it may be very, very good for really detailed smart repairs and really tight smart repairs, but I felt if you wanted to do anything bigger, then I might struggle with a gun like that. I didn't feel like it had a big enough fan or a big enough output for how I personally like to paint. Now, obviously, I'm not a smart repairer predominantly. You know, mostly we do, like, full panels or quite large jobs. But we do do a lot of bump corner blow-ins and a lot of smart repairs and a, little, a lot of fiddly stuff like this. And even, say, if you're a motorbike painter, um, if we get any motorbike paint work from now on, I can guarantee you this little Ego 190 will be the spray gun that I pick up. Now, as far as sort of a mini or a midi gun goes, and I'd class this more as a midi gun rather than a mini gun because it's got the sort of feel of a mini gun, but it sprays like a full size gun. So for me, I'm going to class this as a midi gun. Um, so if it's like motorbike panels, you know. Smart repairs where you're going up to a full panel, something like um, alloy wheel refurbishment, stuff like that. Absolutely ideal. Now, the only thing is, out of some of the miniguns out there, it would be towards the higher of the price range. So these come in at 299.52, plus the VAT from our sponsors over at SP Supplies. And I will leave a link in the video description for you guys so you can take a look at the spray gun on their website. But Although they do come in at 299 plus the VAT, that still makes them cheaper than, say, the new DV1S, um, the Devilbis minigun. And to me, out of all the miniguns that I've ever tried and ever used, and I've used pretty much all of them bar the DV1S, um, this feels like the better option out of all of them. If I was doing smart repairs and I really wanted to invest in a good quality minigun, that I could spray, say like large bumper corners with, or you know like half a bumper, or even do, you know, I've got to be honest, the fan and the output on this is big enough to do something like a door or a wing, um, if you want to do a single panel smart repair, um, alloy wheels, that sort of stuff, it'd be absolutely ideal for that sort of thing. And the finish on it, and the lay down, and the material transfer as well, the material transfer is so good on this and there's very little overspray. So for me, that little bit extra in the cost of the spray gun, um, bearing in mind the amount of paint saving that I'm going to get and the ease of use of using the spray gun, that little bit extra in the cost would be more than worth it. Now, I know a few guys who do smart repairs, um, like Specky Painter on Instagram, he's got one of these. Um, he absolutely loves it for the smart repair work that he does. And I would say that by far, like, look at the size of the fan on this thing. It's huge. For what is supposed to be a minigun, that is a massive fan. Um, I really don't think you can knock this spray gun for the price, for the quality. 
just the overall everything about it, I really do like this spray gun. Now, on this second coat of clear, you'll see here that I'm going right up to this tape on this swage line. I'm not trying to be gentle and miss the tape. You can go right up to it. If it's on a nice harsh swage line, so we're using a swage line a little bit like you can see on the bottom of that door, where it's got quite a harsh edge on it. You can paint right up to this tape, and you'll see shortly in the video when I take it off, there is the lightest feathered edge along that edge there. So if you just blow a tiny little bit of fade out thinner over it, um, for me personally, I'm using the aerosol form multi-mix um, fade out at the moment and I really like it because it's really easy and simple to use. I can just pull it out of my booth box, give it a quick flick over and it'll take that fade out, out really nice. Um, I'll leave a link in the description as well to you guys for that. Um, but overall, as far as this job went, um, and this was I think... I think this is my f second or third time using this spray gun, um, and as I said, a mini gun is not the sort of thing that I normally pick up whatsoever. Um, even if I've got a decent one on the shelf, it is rare that I would pick up a mini gun. But I'm kind of like, as I'm going through jobs at the moment, I'm thinking, oh, I could use that little mini gun on this because it's the kind of gun that works so well. Even though I'm so used to using a big gun, that it is a gun that I want to pick up to do work with, which for me, as far as a mini, gu mini gu guns go, is very, very rare. Now, a little tip for you guys when you are taking this blend edge tape off, don't pull it off straight off, stretch it like I'm doing here. It'll pull off really clean and it'll leave no glue residue behind if you stretch it off. It just makes it a lot easier and a lot nicer to remove without the risk of it touching the paint or any issues. And you can see that tiny, tiny little fade out edge there. So just a quick little bit of rattle can, fade out thinner across there and you will be absolutely spot on. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this week's video and I'll see you again next week. So bye for now.